So this is my Unit 5 presentation for the discussion board by me, Justin Woodall. So first we got primary colors, which are basic colors that can be mixed together to produce other colors, usually considered to be red, yellow, blue, and sometimes green. So here we've got the color wheels there to your left in the middle is a piece of art that just leaves the red, yellow, and blue primary colors. And then art piece next to it, they used the same colors plus added a little bit of green into it. All right, next is the, te, how you say it, tertiary, ter, tertiary colors, I think. <laughs> Anyways, um, or intermediate color is a color made by mixing full saturation of one primary color with half saturation of another primary color and none of a third primary color in a given color space, such as the the RGB, the CMYK, or RYB, which is traditional. And so the descriptions here I have is um, like the model and her dress there. Those were ter tertiary colors that they used. Um, the wheel there at the top shows you know it's every other color basically is a tertiary color and then there's the another diagram of the same similar to what i just said there towards the bottom right corner all right now we have triads um the triad color schemes traditionally uses three hues that are evenly spaced around the color wheel so like the pieces of art here that I chose for the description you can tell the one with the woods there has like blue green a little bit of a uh, pale red there and then the one to the right is just a uh, red yellow and like a pink color or a faded red and so they was made using just the three colors. Alright, next we have the analogous colors. And they are a group of three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And a tertiary. So like red orange and red orange are examples of the term analogous Analogous refers to having analogy or corresponding of something in particular. So, basically, like, any three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel is what you would use to create, like, a picture or something like that. Okay, we have the color temperature. It's conventionally expressed in kelvins using the symbol K, a unit of measure for absolute temperature. Color temperatures over 5,000 kelvins are called cool colors, which is gives a bluish tone. While the lower color temperatures, which would range from 2,700 to 3,000 kelvins, are called warm colors which have a yellowish tone to them and then here on the graph you can see it gives the the kelvins and the tones that they would be in like 10,000, 6,000, 4,000 and so on so here I did all the saturated, desaturated, the light desaturated light, desaturated dark, I just did that all here on this one presentation because they all are have a similar meaning but not really because they each have their own meaning but they all fall into a similar category in my opinion so so the saturation defines the brilliance and intensity of a color when a pigment hue is toned both white 
and black or gray are added to the color to reduce the color saturation. So I chose these images like the one at the top on the Kelvin scale. You've got it starts like a warm right a warm white at the three thousand Kelvins and then it goes to a neutral and then a cool over there to the side. Um, the picture just below you can tell it's started as a light desaturated and then they just toned it up more to really make the photo pop and then to the right is a dark desaturated example all right so now we have the rgb which refers to the three hues of the light that can be mixed together to create different colors combining red green and blue light is the standard method of producing color images on screens such as TVs, computers, monitors, and smartphone screens. So, you know, like recently the famous thing for like TikTok videos, everybody has the LED lights and the main color stream is the red, green, and the blue, but they can also mix the colors together to create like a purple or like a neon color and so that's RGB. Now we have the CMYK which we all see on we use for our printers and the ink cartridges you know which is the primary colors of the pigment is the cyan, the magenta, yellow, and black. And so these are the four colors they process well with printing and they're commonly referred to as full color printing or four co yeah four color printing four color or full color <laughs> printing and then next we have spot color which is uh, or a solid color is any color generated by an ink pure or mixed that is printed using a single run whereas a process color is produced by printing a series of dots of different colors so I chose this photo because it's just they used a black and white photo and then they just chose to do just the to make the petals of the rose pop out just the red so that's the example of spot color. And then last we have the hexadecimal code, which is a way to represent a color in the RGB format by combining three values, the amounts of red, green, and blue in a particular shade or color. These color hex codes have been an integral part of HTML for web design and remain a key way of representing color formats digitally. And so here is just an example of what the codes look like. We've been using it, or seeing it rather, and while using Illustrator or even in the Photoshop. And yeah. So that's my presentation, and I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you.